Hi, this is Vicki from PatternPrincess.com. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be making some crochet soap bags today, or soap saver bags. Um, so this has the ties in it. This one here is in, um, oh, I was going to say it's mint. It's peaches and cream. It's a cotton yarn. And the other one here is a lilac, fresh lilac it's called. Um, today we're going to actually be making one in a sunshine. Um, this color here and then I recently did one in a bright blue same kind of um, yarn the peaches and cream and each um, skein that's this size will make you about three um, washcloths or three of the soap saver bags um, but this is a washcloth that I recently did it's it's quite similar to this here um, you can see it's a little bit this bag here is a little bit shorter um, and this is actually also wider than what the washcloth is. Um, I have a ruffle on top of this one. You would not have to have the ruffle. You could certainly end and then weave in your um, tie in the top row here. So you could actually have it just end like that if you wish. But I think that having the ruffle on top makes a really nice touch. If you would like to see the pattern for the washcloths, um, it is on, available for free on my website, patternprincess.com. This is the soap holder um, pattern is also there for free, and um, this is just this is washcloth without a ruffle, and you could also do a single crochet with a and I would probably put three single crochets in each end. Um, you could have a ruffle on both sides. This is what it would look if you did a washcloth with a ruffle on both sides. I have one here um, with two the two ruffles. So if you would like to do that, you could. But um, today we're uh, going to work on the soap bags and I have it started for you here. I'm going to just do a quick swatch. This is just a partial um, chain. Uh, if you would like to um, adjust the stitches that are in the soap bag. This here is 30 stitches long. Um, I would just make sure that it's an even stitch, but you can make it as as wide or narrow as you like but this is just a small swatch to show you how to do the stitches so I have the chain done already I have 16 chains so in the very first stitch right here I'm going to single crochet then chain one and skip the one single crochet in the next stitch chain one skip one single crochet we're going to do this all the way across the same pattern of chaining one, skipping one, and single crochet. I'm about halfway done right now. And then we're going to end up on the very last stitch. Then you turn, chain two. Now in the very first spot where you skip the stitch, right here, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, and pull through all three loops. That is a half double crochet. Chain one, and then in the next hole right here where you skip the stitches, yarn over and pull through all three again. Chain one, you're skipping that single crochet, yarn over, put your yarn in that hole, the stitch hole, go through all three. I gotta get some more yarn here. Oh, I'm sorry. My yarn is all fungled here. Chain one, yarn over, put your yarn in that hole, pull through all three, single crochet, skipping a stitch, yarn over, do your half double crochet, single crochet, or chain one, skipping that single crochet, half double crochet, chain one, skipping it, half double crochet. Now, you would Oopsies, hang tight. For some reason I didn't even catch my yarn. Okay, so you would think that you would be done if you would just do your half double crochet in this last one here, but it's not. So you can see how this side here is really nice and straight. Well, if I did that, this would not be straight. If you take a look at the um, this swatch here, the sides are very nice and straight, right? So in order to achieve that, what I did is I did one more chain and then I yarned over and in that very first single crochet I picked up the top of both loops 
I got it a little bit tight there. And I brought it through. Now I'm going to do the, my last half double crochet right in that last stitch. Um, it just, it, I found that it really helps me keep nice solid edges on it. So the next one is your chain one row, or your single crochet row. So I chained one. And then right in here, I'm going to single crochet, chain one, skipping that, single crochet in the hole, chain one, single crochet, and that previous row chain one space. Each, each time you're going to go into the previous row chain one space. And this whole pattern is a alteration of the single crochet row and the half double crochet row until you get to the ruffle, if you choose to put the ruffle on. Um, you can certainly do it whichever way you like. Now, I'm in the very end here. So now this is my single crochet row. This was my half double crochet row. So in order to make that corner the edge real nice, I'm going to actually insert my hook in that end and complete my last single crochet. That's another trick to keep the other side. And of course, now what I would do is turn it. I'll do one more row here for you. You do chain two and then my half double crochet. Chain one, skipping the stitch, half double crochet in that row. Chain one, half double crochet in that chain previous row, chain one spot. Chain one, half double crochet. Chain one, half double crochet. Chain one, half double crochet. Chain one, half double crochet, and remember, we are going to end in this little spot here. I did the chain one in between, and then our half double crochet, and then I would turn it. You can see that this pattern is quickly starting to take shape. We can, I could lay this right on top. So you can see that I just did part, part of it, okay? Well, this is 30, sti 30 stitches wide. This here, so far, is 17 rows long not including your um, chain, initial chain stitch. So I'm gonna set this one aside, okay? So um, I did end with my single crochet row here. Actually, it's over here, pardon me. <laughs> I was looking at it from the bottom. I ended with my single crochet row. So now I get to get my hook in my loop. So now we're gonna add the ruffle on the top. Okay single crochet then oops I it shouldn't yarn over in that previous row spot the chain one spot I'm going to single crochet again then chain two yarn over twice because we're going to do in that same hole we're going to do a treble crochet each time you pull through two loops then we have a yarn over once same in the same hole we're going to do a double crochet then in the next, we're going to skip that single crochet. In the next chain one space, we're going to single crochet, chain two, yarn over twice, go through two loops, go through two loops, and the last two, yarn over, and then our double crochet, we go through two loops, and two loops. And then we're going to skip that one, and then we single crochet into the next chain one space, chain two, yarn over twice, keep going through the two loops and the two loops, yarn over, half double crochet, pardon me, my yarn was tangling, and then single crochet in this hole, chain two, yarn over twice. We're gonna to continue to do this all the way across the top and in a second, I'll show you the rough, nice ruffle that it's starting to form. I couldn't see my little hole. Whoopsies, I forgot to yarn over twice. Hold tight. Yarn over twice, there we go. And then catch all those little loops on the hook to make sure you don't have one hanging out there. That's about my luck, what I would do. I'm trying to show you the video on how to do it right. Yarn over twice. And 
And then I'm going to do another double crochet. So you can see, I'm going to stop a second. Your ruffle is starting to form. So I'm going to quickly finish this and I'll let you do yours and we'll catch up. And when we get to the end, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I just did my last double crochet on the end here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet in the very last stitch. And then this is done. We have our ruffle across the whole top. And then you can see that our next step is going to be to fold this and to sew in my ends. So what I like to do, I always like to leave a long tail on anyway, but if you, I like to have enough because I'm going to have to, when I, when I turn this, I'm going to have to have enough to go around this and sew this. So a nice way to do that is just lay it out. Now this would barely make it because I'd have to have some to sew in to make sure that I weave back and forth to make sure we don't have any um, ends come out. So I do a little bit more than what I need just to be on the safe side. Always good to be on the safe side. Now, I like to put the right sides together. I think that I could have, um, when, you, when you sew this yarn together, you can't, I couldn't really tell where I had sewn it together, but I just think that it, it's nicer if you put the right sides together and then um, turn it inside and out. So I have to pull this through the very last stitch. Okay, I'm going to pull that through. That locks that into place. Now this is the wrong side. You can see the stripes through here. And you, you can see the difference between the two sides. All right. So I'm going to put this together and I have to thread my needle. I have a yarn needle. And it has a bigger eye in it. You can see it has a, a quite a bit bigger eye than a normal sewing needle. Pull your yarn through and then just make sure that everything's lined up. Make sure that your bottoms are lined up that you have a nice square to work with. And then I just start sewing my yarn through. And I'm gonna actually sew, and I actually like to sew this across. Um, just back and forth, You make sure that you grab a stitch or two on the very end. And I like to go through both of the loops on, on each stitch as I do it. Um, I don't leave very much room in between my stitches because I want it to hold together nicely. I don't want to have large gaps in my sewing and in my crocheting. Um, I want it to look like it, like it was, you know, professionally done. Even though I don't know that I would consider that right now. <laughs> this is a homemade item that um, we want to have look nice. So I'm going to continue to sew this and when I get to the corner um, I'm going to show you how to make the tie that's going to go through here next. So I'm going to sew down to here and I'm going to sew over to here and then I'm going to weave my yarn back through, through and then I'm going to cut it off. And then when I come back we're going to make the ties here, okay? Welcome back. So I finished sewing along the edge and along the bottom and then I weaved the yarn back and forth here and I cut it off. Now see, you can see that this is, I could probably leave it like this if I wanted to. So if you chose to leave your bag like this with just this edge sewn together, I actually think, like I'd mentioned before, that that looks just fine. This one here though, um, I did turn inside out. So I'll do that on this one here. But again, if you choose to leave it with those sides together. I think that it would be just fine if you didn't turn it inside out. Make sure that you poke out the ends. Okay, so now we're ready to do the tie. So the tie, um, this one here is 60 stitches long. This one here is a little bit shorter. I did it 55. Um, I kind of like the longer stitches a little bit better, I think. Um, it's up to you, certainly, how many stitches you'd like to do. So what I did, though, is I chained 60. And all that I did is in the very, as I'm coming um, back now, I'm just going to slip stitch through. So each and every one, I just do a slip stitch. 
every single stitch and I'm going to do all the way back the whole 60. It takes a little bit of time to do. It's not a it's not a fast thing. And you just put your hook in each in the top of each stitch and you bring it through and you just do a slip stitch in every single one. And then it really forms a nice little tie closure. And then once I have it done, we're going to weave it through the holes. So I'm going to continue working on this and it'll give you time to work on yours. And then as soon as I get this done, I will meet you back here and we're going to weave it in and finish up our wonderful soap bag. Okay, you can see that's starting to form. And I'll meet you right back here. Okay, I have finished doing my um, slip stitches and I've made my tie. And I am not going to weave this in here. Um, and I have a quite a long yarn tail here because I'm going to use this to snake it through here. So I'm going to start at this hole here, right where the actually right where my seam is. You can see that that's the seam side. And I'm going to put this right in here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm pulling that through. And of course when I'm done, I'm going to make sure that I have this um, laying flat too. I don't want to have any twists in it when I'm done. And so now we're going to come out here under the next bar. But this yarn helps it um, that I've left on the end helps me snake it through easy. Now that I have it to this point, now I just start putting it underneath the bar and pulling my yarn pieces. See how you can bring it through really nice now? And I'm going to work this all the way around the end until I get to the other side. I'll see how fast I can work this here for you. And I'm not worried too much about twists right now. I'm going to straighten it out and make sure that there's no twists when I'm all said and done. But for right now, I'm just going to show you how I get it through. I'm going to just keep weaving it over one bar and under the other. As you can see, it doesn't take just too, too long. And if you mess it up, it doesn't matter. You can just take it back out, put it back in. Okay, and I think I have one more to go. Yep. And then I'm gonna go under and bring it right outside that last same hole. There we go. Now, it's a little bit twisted, but I, I'm going to have to fix it. But here you go. And I'll have to make sure that it um, I don't have one side too, too much longer than the other side. So we'll adjust it. But, you know, as you use this, you can tighten this up. It just looks really cute. And it does fit a bar of soap in here. So I hope that you have enjoyed uh, making your own soap bag. Again, you can make them in all different colors. And... Your ties can be different lengths, and you can also, again, use this as a washcloth pattern if you'd like to. So, again, thanks for watching, and make your own uh, wonderful project. Thank you.